Welcome to this tutorial. My name is Peter Pohle. In this tutorial, I will show you how to assemble a scene like this from a variety of photographs. Um, first of all, we have a photograph, or I have a photograph of Burg Elz Castle in Germany. A scene from the Costa Barber. Um, then this castle wall from Corleur in southern France. And a sky scene with the storm clouds from northern Germany. All these are photographs I took on my vacation in visiting Europe. Plus, uh, we will use, or I will use a, a tree from textures.com. I will show you where that website is. And we will assemble this scene. It just all of the colors uh, work a lot with uh, adjustment layers and masking to produce this scene. And I wanted to create a scene that has a very moody feel, a very heavy storm scene that where the last evening light is peeking through openings in the clouds and lighting up parts of that castle which also creates a really nice focal point. Creating this tutorial, I worked on a PC. So you would see little text boxes that will indicate whether the keyboard shortcuts are on the PC. In that case, they will be highlighted in the yellow. If it's uh, the Mac commands, they will be shown in a light green. Uh, you will also see that uh, indications whether I'm going to use my left mouse button, middle mouse button, or right mouse button will also be shown, will be shown highlighted in yellow. Otherwise, all of the important information, what kind of brush settings or detailed information will be shown and explained in little text boxes. I'm choosing the image with the wall of Corolla uh, as my main Photoshop file. You can see at the top that all of my other files are available in Photoshop. I have the cloud, the sea and the castle file. Then I'm choosing the cloud file and copy it. And then I paste it in my main Photoshop file. I'm using the transform tool to drag it out to the left and to the right to expand it over the whole scene. So I'm unlocking the layer with the wall and move it up to the top. Then I uh, name my layers and or I'm adding a mask to my layer with the wall, making black as my foreground color, choose a round brush and make it relative small and set the hardness to relative hard. And then I'm painting in the mask and, and I'm clicking and hold on the shift key and click again and that creates a straight line. I'm outlining uh, along the wall, which as you can actually, it's revealing the sky now. And so I'm basically painting along the wall, and obviously this is sped up. This is not the actual speed that I'm usually drawing. So I'm going all the way to the end there, left a little area out, uh, go around the church building, go to the top, and then from there I'm basically drawing a straight line. Switching to my channels tab, and you can see at the top we have actually a channel there that shows the outline. I'm using the magic wand tool and I'm clicking below. Basically, that's where the wall is, and it creates the marching ants. I'm inverting the mask, and basically, the top then I fill completely with black. Uh, you could also just paint on the mask in the layers with black on the top along the line. Then, with the transform tool, I'm shorten my sky. I'm opening the document with the ocean in it and I duplicate it just to have a backup because I want to do some changes to it. I'm adding the rulers and pulling a guide in because the horizon is kind of curved and I want to straighten that out. So I'm going to set the guides, then I'm using the transform tool and I use the war tool at the top in order to straighten out the horizon line as you can see. Select it all, copy and paste it into my other scene. And I am adding a guide or do the similar thing. I'm adding a horizon line in because I want to match up that uh, C horizon line and I'm flipping it. I'm using the edit, transform, flip horizontal and I'm lining up the horizon. And with the transform tool, I'm stretching out the C a tiny bit, not away, all the way to the left. I'm adding a mask to it and similar to the wall, I'm painting in the mask with black as my foreground color and basically block out the sky and go along the, uh, the mountains and then the horizon. And I'm using 
at the horizon where the ocean ends again my shift command by clicking and then clicking again but in between holding the shift key in order to create a straight line and then with a larger brush tool I'm blocking out or painting with black in the mask the rest and then I'm lowering the transparency in my layer in order to see what do I really need to block out so I kind of go along the the coastline along the edge of the wall and then I'm blocking out the rest of the sky and uh, completely cover it with black. Then I'm adding a group layer and I click and drag the C layer into the group, name the group, then I'm adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer holding down the optional alt tab press between the two layers in order to link it to the C layer, play with the adjustments, lower the saturation, make the C a little bit darker, play with the color settings a tiny bit. And when I achieve what I uh, like or the colors that I wanted, then I also delete the mask because I don't need that for the hue and saturation layer. So I'm lowering the opacity of my C layer again, working in the mask. I'm going back and clean up my coastal shoreline a little bit more and get rid of all of the little things that I missed before. So I'm increasing the opacity again and look at the scene what it would look uh, if it looks okay this way but then I decided to drag that adjustment layer above the group and link it to the group and then I'm also using color coding in order to recognize what the layers all mean that I add another empty layer above the C layer and now I'm using the stamp tool to fill in those areas of the coastline where I don't have any rocks in order to cover up those uh, lawn chairs. And I'm changing the origin of my, or the, um, the source of my stamp tool or clone tool. I frequently change it and uh, you want to go back probably later to look at the annotations that gives a more dis uh, clear description of the settings for my clone tool. But I'm switching back and forth, uh, changing my uh, clone sources. Um, I still have to do that also along the coastline because I want to get rid of the, uh, the cement area there with the people walking on it. So I'm picking different uh, rocks again, being careful not to um, duplicate it or in a way make it look like as if there are two uh, similar rocks sitting next to each other. Try to avoid some repetition and I basically then go along the whole coastline and uh, make it a little bit more natural looking how it m merges into the bottom of the wall um, of the castle wall. I'm adding another hue and saturation layer. The mask in the hue and saturation layer I fill with black. With the lasso tool I'm outlining the mountain range and fill that area with white. And I'm darkening the mountain range because it is too light. I'm adding a photo filter adjustment layer as the third adjustment layer to the adjustment layer stack. And because I'm feeling that the C is a little bit too blue and I'm using the warming filter, adjust a little bit the colors, um, not make it a too strong, but trying to find the median in the color range. Also make sure that all of those adjustment layers are linked to the C group. Inside of the C group folder, I'm adding another empty layer because I want to add some foam to the shoreline 
And uh, if you want to know what the brush settings are, just look at the annotations on the screen. There's some particular settings in the brush settings. And I'm basically adjust this brush settings, use a regular round brush, adjust the spacing, add some size jitter, add some scattering, and uh, under the opacity uh, transfer, I'm adjusting the opacity control that is controlled by the pen pressure, which is going to mean that when I work with the stylus passata, that it's going to be more intense, and when I press light, it's going to be light. I'm picking some color from the scene that's close to the foam color, make it a little bit lighter, and uh, then basically paint along the shoreline to add a little bit of a foam or crashing waves along the shoreline. As you can see in the in the uh, demonstration, uh, I. Now I may get a little bit carried away too much and then I erase some of it again. You would see it probably at the end that I got a little bit almost too much. You know, that's easy to, you know, get too much into it and to make it a little bit overbearing or too uh, too many foam. But um, anyway, um, I just thought it, it's going to add a little bit more drama to my scene. You see that I'm erasing some of it again because I felt like it was a little bit too much. And then I'm basically grouping all of those adjustment layers in the C group together. Now I'm adding the castle to my scene with the lesser tool and draw a selection around the castle. Copy it and paste it into my scene above the C layer. Then I control or command click above the, the mask icon, which copies the selection, add a mask to my castle. And then under the image adjustment, invert, because I want the bottom to be covered. I'm clicking on the link icon to unlink the mask from the image and use the transform tool to scale the castle into place. I'm creating another group layer. Then in Control or Command, click on the mask again to copy the mask. Add the mask to the group, paste it in, and delete the mask of the castle. I don't need it. Color code my group and then drag the image of the castle into the group. I close the castle group. I'm adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Delete the mask for the layer and link the and saturation layer to the castle group. I'm opening another file that's called Perspective Grid. That's a grid that I created. I copy and paste it into the document. And if you look at the descriptions in the, in the scene, you see that I'm using that to line it up with the horizon line and the diagonal line that the, lines up with the castle wall. Then I'm duplicating the castle because I want to keep one as a backup. And the duplicated, I'm going to select and use the transform tool. And by holding down the control of the command key, you can individually move the corners and line up the castle so that it matches the perspective grid lines. Now the 90 degree angles or the surfaces that are looking into the other direction, I'm selecting again and adjust it a little bit so that it visually works with the perspective. And I'm cutting it apart so that um, the other parts of the castle will kind of fit in nicely into the scene, adjusting the angles so that it visually uh, lines up or that the perspective visually works okay. And I'm doing it with the last part of the gate. I'm also cutting that apart and create kind of an entrance to the castle. Again, I'm cutting it where the corners are of those uh, elements or those castle elements and adjusting those. But I'm also always holding down the control or the command key on the Mac 
in order to just individually control the angles. Then I'm using the stamp tool to clean up some of those edges. And um, again, with previously that I've done with the mask, uh, I'm painting in the mask with black to cut out the background of the castle using the same tool of holding down the shift key between each um, brush point in order to create straight lines, adjusting the side of the brush in order to cover larger areas, um, and kind of work around the whole castle building. Come back and I'll bring, erase or cover up with those large areas. Always adjusting the size of the brush in order to get into those little corners and crevices. Uh, there's a little area of the cut that I still need to retouch and clean up. Um, kind of make my way around the castle. And can still see there are little gaps that need a little bit of attention with the stamp tool to or the clone tool to clean up and adjust. There's a little bit of an area that it's not still not quite working. and use the stand to a clone to to still clean up some of those gaps. I decided that there are some uh, trees needed in the scene, so I'm opening textures.com and uh, look under the listing of where the trees are and I'm downloading a few trees while I'm deleting the one castle layer because I'm pretty happy with what I've done. Uh, I'm choosing some of the trees or one of the trees and bring that in. And in this case, I'm not using an adjustment layer, but I directly adjust the or use the hue and saturation to adjust the tree to make it darker and more gray. Uh, so use the transform tool to scale it to a particular site. or scale it in various sizes. Uh, sometimes I flip it, turn it the other direction, and basically between the castle wall and the castle, I'm dragging several trees and basically arrange some interesting background behind it so that it doesn't look so bare. I also merge the layers of the trees that are in front of the castle and the layers of the trees that are behind the castle. I'm creating an empty layer and paint basically between the castle and the trees with a soft uh, low opacity brush to create a little bit more depth. Then I'm also painting directly onto the tree layers at the bottom in order to create a little bit more depth at the bottom. Above the hue and saturation layer I add a curve adjustment layer and drag the curve a little bit downward. Link it to the castle layer then I delete the layer mask and I'm also desaturate the hue and saturation layer a tiny bit. I decided that I also need to darken the wall layer. So I'm adding a curve adjustment layer, link it to the layer, darken it by putting the curve downward, and also add a hue and saturation layer because the colors are a little bit too saturated, and drag the saturation to the left, delete the layer mask. As a final step, I want to create a little bit of sunlight that hits the top of the building. So for that, I need to duplicate the castle group, drag it all the way to the top, give it a different color code, I also make sure that I relink the adjustment layers to the first castle group. Since the new castle group, uh, I want the castle to appear as if it's going to be hit by very warm sunlight. I'm adding a photo adjustment layer and a curve layer, and I adjust the curves so the lights are light and the darks are darker. Make sure that those are linked to the new castle group. Then I select the castle group and the two adjustment layers, click on the folder icon at the bottom and create a new group. 
which contains the adjustment layers and the cursor group. The group that I created now uh, contains all of the elements, all of the adjustments that I need. I'm adding a mask to that final group. Use the paint bucket and fill that mask with black. Then I'm going back and I'm switching the foreground color to white. Choose a brush and start out with pretty light opacity settings. And I'm using a soft brush. And I begin painting in the top areas of all of the uh, areas of the building that faces toward the left. I imagine that the light is coming from or hitting basically the top areas first and then fading out at the bottom. I'm frequently changing my brush size and my opacity settings. Um, to the bottom I want the light then to fade out and if I have very small areas at the chimney then I'm obviously working with a very small brush. So I'm starting at the roof line with a small tighter brush at the bottom. I'm enlarging my brush size. Um, I may go back and switch to black in order to fold some of those areas back in at the bottom of the roof there. I haven't done that yet. Um, but I'm when I work with a larger brush then I'm softening usually or in, uh, lower my opacity settings. Zooming out to see what it looks like from the distance. It, going back, opening up the group, adjust the curves. Uh, I need the curves need to be a little bit harder or darker at the bottom. And uh, playing with the curves again to uh, give the impression of a very warm light. Using switching back to black to fill in some of those areas where I painted out too much. And then basically finishing off the areas. I don't want to overdo it. Just do a tiny bit by feathering out the light at the bottom there. At the bottom of the building so I uh, get softer. And, um, and I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing, how it's developing and how it's coming together. And I think it makes a lot of sense. So I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. Um, I think I'm leaving it at that.